Kayak tournament fishing. A lot of you guys that watch this channel are kayak tournament fishermen. A lot of you guys that watch this channel fish out of a kayak. And one question I get all the time on this channel is, Alex, what is your kayak tournament setup? And that's what we're gonna go over today. I'm gonna break down all the different parts, the different things that I do to stay efficient on the water. And I'll be honest with you, I think you're gonna be surprised how simple that it actually is because keeping it simple, oftentimes means putting more fish in the boat, especially for me. But before we get into all that, I wanna thank you guys for taking time out of your busy day to come hang out with me and to watch this video. If you're new to my channel, please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that notification bell to let you guys know when I put out all of my videos. Also, go down in the comment section, let me know that you are new to my channel. The channel's been growing like crazy and it's because of you guys. Again, taking time out of your busy day, your busy week to come hang out with me, to watch the videos, share the videos. It's been awesome to see the channel grow. Also, go down in the description. I'm gonna have links to everything that we talk about today. There'll be Tackle Warehouse links and there'll be a couple extra links to places like Old Town so you can check out all the gear that I talked about. So go down there, use those links. When you use those links, it helps me out on the back end. It will not affect your purchase at all, but it helps me just to keep the channel running, to keep these videos going. But without further ado, let's get into this tournament rig breakdown. All right, so we're gonna start with the kayak itself. This year I am running, and really what I ran most of last year is the Old Town Predator PDL. This is a 13 foot boat. It is an absolute behemoth of a boat, a real, a real battleship. This thing is awesome. And the reason that I run this kayak a majority of the time, and I say a majority of the time because I also have the top water right in there that I run sometimes, but I run the Predator majority of the time because most of the kayak tournaments that I fish, we're gonna be fishing a lot of lakes, a lot of big water. I'm not doing a ton of river floats or anything like that. And so the Predator for me is just that bigger, faster boat. And I love speed when I'm kayak fishing. It allows me to go from one place to another really, really quickly if I need to, but still fish very comfortably out of the big 13 foot boat. So the Predator is gonna be the boat of choice. Now I know what you're saying, Alex, what about your autopilot? Well, a majority, and when I say a majority, I mean like every one of the kayak tournaments that I fish except for maybe a KBF or a bass tournament every now and then are pedal drive only. You cannot use electric motors. And so I have to go with the pedal drives just to stay within the rules. So that's again why I choose the Predator to the PDL system. Now, let's start right up here in the front of the kayak. You're gonna see this rope right here. This is a big tip. I learned this the hard way. This is a pull rope. And what this is for is for when you get in a situation where you need to pull this kayak or you need to drag this kayak. And what happened to me a couple years back is I did a little bit of a river float in this kayak. And I really thought the place was gonna be deep enough that I was gonna be able to float most of it without having to worry about dragging the kayak. And they turned the generators off on this place and lo and behold, I'm dragging this kayak. And it was an absolute bear to try to grab a hold of this front handle and pick it up high enough out of the rapids to drag this kayak around and so after that trip i threw this rope in here so that i can drag it around if i need to you guys can see it's a good long piece of rope it allows me to get that rope over my shoulder have a ton of leverage with it and be able to move this big kayak because totally rigged down this thing weighs about 150 pounds and so it's a heavy kayak and so you got to have some leverage to move it but put a drag rope in your kayak it has saved me in several situations it's also great if you ever get in a situation where you need to take a poop or something like that you can tie your kayak off or something if you need to do it's just good to have rope in the boat with you now you guys can see down here i've got a rain jacket so usually in this box i don't got it in here right now I just threw this rain jacket in here as an example i will run an extra rain jacket an extra set of bibs rain pants i will run an extra catch board an extra set of paddles and some toilet paper and other stuff that I might need on the water. I run it in this dry box just so that I have it because you never know. I mean, if you were to get wet, you were to fall in, anything like that, those extra clothes are gonna get you dry, they're gonna get you warm. Again, if you need to poop, you got something to wipe your butt with. I mean, those are the kinds of things a lot of people don't think about, but when you're spending eight, nine, 10, 12 hours on the water, this is a great place to keep all that stuff because the way this is designed, you've got this battery box here and it doesn't really have a super good chance of like falling down in there because of the design. And so you're able to stick a bunch of extra stuff in there so that you have it. And then when you close your waterproof hatch down on top of it there, you don't have to worry about it getting wet or anything like that. So that's how I kind of utilize the whole front part of my kayak. Now, before we start talking about that, you guys saw that my net was sitting right there. This is actually where I run my net on tournament day. For me, having it up front here is just the best place. It's 
easily accessible. It's easy for me to net fish. I used to run it right back here in this rod holder until I just stopped doing that. And the reason I stopped doing that is because I caught a fish, and this is kind of happenstance, I caught a fish and I laid this net up here on the front of my kayak and left it there. And so when I caught the next fish, I was it was so easy to grab it in the neck the next fish that I thought I'm leaving that net there from now on and so that became a part of my system I leave that net on the front of my kayak just like that and don't run it in that back rod holder and again it frees up space back there as well now moving on to the PDL system it's got a dry box right here in this dry box this is where I put my phone my keys my wallet I keep my turning tag in there an extra scupper plug a sharpie a flashlight all kinds of just stuff that I may need again keys wallet going there because I don't have to worry about them once they're in that dry box. I have flipped this kayak over on purpose and there's no water getting into this dry box. So anything valuable, especially on the Predator, you guys can see it is a big, deep dry box. It's almost like having a Pelican case attached to your PDL. I can put pretty much anything that I need in there. GoPro batteries, GoPro anything. I mean, if it goes in there, it's gonna be safe and I don't have to worry about it. And so that's how I utilize that and I run that. Now, moving back just a little bit farther, we've got the two pouches here, one on one side, one on the other. On the right side, I always run my scissors and my pliers because you're gonna need to cut stuff and you may need to dig hooks out of fish's face, so I've always got those there. And then this side, I don't run anything. What I'll actually do is if I start using a certain plastic during the day and they're biting it really, really well, or I'm using a certain bait or something I'm using over and over and over again, I'll stick it right there in that pouch just so I have it easily accessible i can grab it when i need it and it keeps it under control it's not laying all out in the bottom of my kayak because a lot of the times especially in the summer warmer weather i'm barefooted and so i don't have to worry about jamming a hook in my foot or anything like that i utilize those little pouches so i don't have to worry about that and then my catch board this year i'm going to be running a 26 inch polycarbonate catch board from catch board um, this thing is their brand new board super excited to start using i put one fish on it last year before I kind of put the kayaks away and got the boat back out and it was a little bitty fish but I can't wait to get this thing all slimed up and start using it. I like the polycarbonate because it is so light. I have a metal catch board, awesome catch board. Thank you to Scott Butcher for getting that catch board for me. But that thing is just so, so heavy. This polycarbonate one is light. I love it. Easy to use, easy to maneuver. I love the yellow color just everything about this thing i like and so that's what i'm going to be running this year and i actually run it right there this is the exact place that i run my catch board while i'm fishing because what i found is tall enough that i set far enough back from the pdl itself that i'm able to run that catch board right there and it doesn't get in my way and when i'm fishing if i need it it's it's just right there i literally pick it right up throw it down to the bottom of the kayak take a picture slide it right back up there into position and we're good to go bing bang boom take the fish picture and again it's just simple it's efficient and that is what i like now moving on back we've got my uh, pfd here so I run two different PFDs. In the summer, I run an auto inflate just for maneuverability and to keep cool. And in the winter, I'll run the traditional PFD for warmth. And just cause I feel like with the traditional style, when I am fully garbed up in a full rain suit and everything like that, that this thing is gonna help me to stay afloat just a little bit better. It just makes me feel more secure. I really truly believe the auto inflates would be just fine. But just for my you know, mentality, I run the traditional in the winter again for warmth it's because I feel like it's a little bit safer now as for the seat I don't run anything under the seat I actually keep that all open right there sometimes I've run some bags of plastics under there if I feel like what I can fit back here isn't enough I'll run some plastic bags under there but for the most part I just keep it open because usually what I do is I'll take my shoes off and I stick them under the seat to get them out of my way again when I'm summer fishing and so I just stick that under there and also I carry a pelican case with me that I put all of my GoPro and camera stuff into and that thing fits perfectly under there too so I'm able to get everything rigged up what I need for the day stick my pelican under there and it gets it out of my way now there's a back pouch on the seat here in the winter I run a pair of gloves, a toboggan, just some extra things that I might need. I run it back here in this pouch. Sometimes I'll even run a small first aid kit, but usually I like to keep it up there in the front pouch. But for the most part, I'll use this pouch in the winter just to run some extra things that I may need to keep warm. Or if it gets warm throughout the day, like it often does in the winter, you know, you'll start out in the 30s and end up in the 70s. I'll 
pull off the things that I don't want on and stick them in here as the day goes on. And in the summertime, I've not really found a use for that pouch yet. Now, going back here, you guys can see I've got some bags of plastics. And I run all of my plastics in these vinyl-sided zip bags. And so I found that sticking them in here is really the best place for them. I can fit two or three of them in here, all stacked on top of each other. Really accessible, easy to turn around and grab what I need. But usually what I do is I've got a few extra of these and I'll grab what I think I need or what I know I need and I'll create like a little day pouch to put all of my plastics in. And I'll usually carry one or two of these things just like they are in here or just one like it sits down in there and have pretty much everything that I need for a turn. Moving on back, we've got the black pack here. Now the black pack is really similar to the bags of plastics here and the fact that I don't run a ton of boxes in here. Obviously you can fill this thing full of all kinds of Planos and stuff like that. But what I've found is like my one box to conquer the fall, my one box to conquer the winter. Those are like day boxes that I build for different seasons. Well, I'll do the same thing for kayak tournament fishing. I'll go practice, I'll figure out what I need in my day box and I'll build myself a day box full of everything that I think I'm gonna need and I'll stick it in here and just keep it simple. I also, you know, I'll obviously bring some extra things. Like if I think they're gonna be brought in a frog, throw the frog box. If I think they're gonna be brought in a crankbait, I'll throw the whole crankbait box in here. But for the most part, I'm building those day boxes just to keep it simple, to keep it a little bit lighter, and just to keep everything a little more efficient. I also keep my light in here, which is actually over there in my other old town right now, but I keep my light and my flag in here as well, just because it's easy, it's accessible, and I never forget it. If it's in my black pack, I don't forget it because this black pack never leaves this boat. And then as far as rods, a lot of people ask me how many rods do I carry with me while I'm on the water? I carry five. I got two flush mounted rod holders here, and I've got three on my black pack. And I've found that really five rods in a kayak tournament, if you can't get away with five rods, I don't know what to tell you. I also carry a lot of multi-purpose rods. I like to have rods that I can use for two or three different things. And so I'll carry those rods with me again because I'm doing the little day bags, I'm doing the day boxes. And so I want a bunch of rods that I can throw all those different kinds of baits on again keeping it simple. I love simplicity, especially when I'm in the kayak because I'm kind of like a traditionalist in this thing. I don't have graphs, I don't have any electronics, I don't have anything like that. I don't even run a battery in this thing. And so I like to keep it simple with the black pack and my rods and baits and everything just like that. And to answer that question, no, there are no electronics on this boat whatsoever. I don't run any. Again, I'm kind of a traditionalist when it comes to the way that I like to kayak fish. And so that's it, that's the entire kayak tournament setup. Well guys, that's it. Hopefully I answered all the questions that you had about how my kayak is set up for tournament fishing. Again, I like to keep it simple because for me, simplicity equals efficiency and efficiency equals confidence and confidence equals putting fish into the kayak. But I'm super excited about this year's kayak tournament setup as well as the schedule that we're running this year for kayak tournaments. We're going to some interesting places, to one lake that we have never fished before as a little tournament group, but a lake that I've only been to once and had some success there and had some success there in the winter. So I'm super excited. That's the first lake of the year, December 9th. We'll be there. You guys will be there with me. We'll be filming. We'll be doing that. I cannot wait to get into this season because the way that the schedule is setting up, I feel like that I can do pretty well. The lakes we're going to, when we're going to them, I feel like be able to put some fish into the kayak but like i said everything i use talked about will be linked down below go use those links most of them will be tackle warehouse affiliate links they help me out on the back end also go down in the comment section if you got any comments anything like that please leave me a comment let me know what the comment is and i'll answer it to the best of my ability but as always you guys are sweet we'll see you later